right, I'm Lauren and welcome to The Afterlight. I'm joined today by Paul Wood. Paul has spent over 10 years working with the healing arts and has taught energy healing in three continents for the last five years. His background includes studying pranic energy healing, intensive training in Hatha Yoga, training in meditation, breath work, and advanced asanas. Paul's mission is to create massive shifts in the lives of others by enhancing their energy system and helping to correct imbalances that may be occurring and to expand people's awareness of their own innate healing abilities. I've asked Paul to join me today on the show to talk about pranic energy healing, who's it for, what's it all about, and how can people like you and me benefit? And we'll also talk about breath work, yoga, which is one of my favorite things to talk about, and meditation. So welcome to the show, Paul. Hi, thanks for inviting me. It's a pleasure. So I know that I kind of, you know, did a really quick summary of, of who you are at the beginning, but can you kind of give me a little bit more information about you and how did you first get involved in the healing arts? Yeah, sure. Okay, so, um, well, look, you know, I certainly wasn't born like a healer or actually have any kind of real inclination towards any of this uh, until kind of my late twenties. Um, and I was actually a, a plumber <laughs> uh, before this and uh, before that I was an aircraft engineer. Wow. So I'm a kind of nuts and boltsy kind of guy, you know, I'm, I'm interested in things that work and I'm interested in knowing how things work. And um, so a friend uh, and myself, we had a plumbing business back in England and <laughs> we went to this lady's house to fit a couple of bathrooms and she said to me and my friend one day, you know, you two are healers. And he ran and I stayed. <laughs> 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 and so she uh, told me a little bit about some different things and I guess just opened the door for me really. Uh, and then, wow. uh, you know, I had a, a back injury. I'd herniated a disc in my back. And so that's difficult being in the construction industry uh, mm -hmm. with a herniated disc. It's not easy. And so I was looking to retrain and uh, uh, a friend said, you know, why, why don't you try being a healer? And I was like, do people pay for that? <laughs> <laughs> And she was like, yeah, oh, yeah, I, go, I get regular treatments. And I was like, right, oh, okay. Because, you know, we, I, I'd been playing around a little bit with what this lady had shown me. Right. And um, so I went to this course. I had this image in my mind that I, I would have to, you know, travel to Africa and China and, you know, this place and that place. And anyway, I ended up doing this course that was literally like half an hour away from my house. And that was it, you know, like the course had everything that I needed in it. And, and, you know, by this time I'd been traveling a little bit, I'd been interested, I'd been reading a lot and, you know, I'd read about the energy system, about chakras and, uh, you know, <clears> different <throat> things. But my question at that time was, although I'm very open-minded, I've also got a lot of, you know, questions, like I'm, I'm critical, a thinker. And so I was like, well, do these things even exist? You know, how would I know if a chakra existed? You know, right. what's the proof? Yeah, and so like all that was there, you know, in my mind. Anyway, so I went to this course and in the first day of this course, we were like looking at auras, you know, and like I'd never done anything like that before. I was like, what? You know, what's going wow. on? And then by the second day, not only were we feeling the chakra with our hands, but we were you know, manipulating it. We were taking energy out. We were putting new energy in. And, you know, people are like healing in the course. And so I went to do the second course and the instructor said, hey, you know, I, I talked to her a little bit. Um, previously, I'd explained my situation and who I was a little bit to her. And she said, hey, let me heal your back. You know, I feel drawn to do some work on your back. It took her about 20 minutes and that was no more herniated disc after that completely wow. gone you know and so I, I just like for me I, I kind of you know these coincidences right you know that happen yeah. as you start going through this um opening stage I guess and uh, yeah like I, I just 
I, I found everything that I wanted. And, and so I stuck with that school and that school is the school that I'm a part of now. And I teach courses now. I show people how to do this work myself. And, and more than anything, I'm like excited by it. You know, it's like when, you know, people are in the clinic and they're telling me about the results that they've got, you know, uh, or that happens instantaneously in the clinic. It's just, it blows your mind. And, you know, you're doing the courses and you're watching people going through that same process, you know, they're learning how to do it. And, and some people in the courses, you know, they're like doing like incredible things, you know, yeah. and you're just like, what? <laughs> you know, it's just, so yeah like 10 years in i feel like i'm six months in still you know i'm just more and more excited by it all I, i'm really enthusiastic about it mm. I, I go to work excited you know <clears throat> the other day i was feeling a little bit you know low and i said to Ange, my wife i said um you know i actually don't really feel like going to work today and she was like what <laughs> <laughs> First time ever. <laughs> and I, I kind of got over it pretty quick, you know, because, I mean, that's the beautiful thing about knowing how the energy system works is you, you can change your energy. You know, you're not yeah. in this position where life is happening to you. Yeah. You're in the driving seat. And I just love that, you know. It just really appeals to me. I love that too. And I love talking to people like you who have a bit of a... I don't know if the right word is more of an analytical mind initially when you were starting off and trying to, because I'm the kind of person that I'm very gullible, I guess you could say. And I, if I, if it feels right, I'll do it. You know, I don't often sit there and process things mentally because if I have an emotional reaction, I just know that it's good for me. So mm -hmm. I always find it difficult sometimes to talk to people about this sort of topic, about healing, about energy, about manifestation, all this sort of stuff, when they just aren't on the same journey yet, or maybe ever. And I find it difficult sometimes to relate. So it would be probably pretty interesting for you to be dealing with some of the people that you might have known from your aircraft engineering days and your plumbing days, to see where you are now. And actually, when you said that, Paul, I thought it was a really interesting observation on my part, humble brag, sorry, <laughs> that you were actually healing at the time aircrafts and plumbing systems and things of that nature. So you were actually healing objects, whereas you just kind of moved that skill set over to deal with people. So I don't know yeah. if you ever thought about that before, but no. <laughs> I thought that was actually kind of an interesting connection. Yeah. So um, I totally agree with you about being able to change your energy. And I do want to talk to you in a few minutes about some of the um, people that you have treated, some of the success stories that you've had. Um, obviously, your back healing is incredible. Uh, it just gives me goosebumps. And the fact that, you know, I can see your enthusiasm and your passion for for this profession, which is really awesome. So I know you mentioned that you were taking some of these courses and that really gave you kind of the foundation that you needed. But I do know that you also did some advanced training as well in places such as India. Can you tell me a little bit about that? Sure, well, so the, the training in India um, was with a different school, but certainly um, the training that I did with this school it's as you say that you do these foundational courses and they're they're very short courses i mean they're packed with information but they're just a weekend usually mm -hmm. uh, and you go through a series of those courses and then once i kind of got towards the end of that i thought well you know i, I want to go forward with this i want to progress with this so i looked for i actually wanted to train with the teacher of the school um but he wasn't in the body anymore he passed on Okay. So I looked for the next person and kind of crazily, well, there's only 10 of these master healers in this school in the world. It's, it's a little bit of a different system to some other schools where, you, you know, you can become a master after just doing a certain amount of courses. It's, um, you have to be able to show a very high proficiency treating very difficult ailments in a very short period of time. And one of these guys lived in Brisbane. <laughs> and I lived in wow. Brisbane. 
I know, right? Uh, you know, 10 of them in the world. <laughs> it's a coincidence. I know, yeah, right? <laughs> yeah. Um, and so there I, I just went to, um, to train with uh, George, Master George. And, um, you know, he was just the most interesting guy. He could speak, you know, 11 different languages, you know. People from Russia would come in, people from Poland would come in, people, and he would just be talking to them, you know, like in their language, and they'd be very impressed, you know. And uh, But more so, he was a guy that, you know, um, like there's videos online of him helping people, you know, recover, uh, you know, from quadriplegia, you know, for recover from uh, cancer of the heart with a number of days to live, you know, really full on like wow. you know just incredible stuff and um so you know you can imagine training with him was just like a real walk on the wild side i, I can remember the first day i went home I, I couldn't actually get my head around some of the things that were happening in the clinic that day you know i couldn't i couldn't actually believe i thought it was a setup i thought yeah you know, <laughs> like because it was so just wild yeah. Um, so, you know, training with George, that was a big deal. But the training in India, that was to do with yoga. Uh, and so I went okay. to train at an ashram in India. Um, and I I'd also trained uh, or, you know, spent time uh, and I, several times have been to an ashram in India of um, a lady called Amma. And she's um, seen as being an enlightened being, uh, you know. And the, again, you know, you just around this woman and there's all the people around her have got these incredible stories and yeah it's just very for me very exciting because i'm really in this place where i'm always asking well how does that work why does it work like that and so then yeah. when you get around these people that are you know changing your reality it's it goes beyond that kind of yeah. logical thinking you can still take yourself into that logical thinking and that's yoga that's why i like yoga because it's a science you know it's a spiritual science yeah. you know it's like do this expect this result um but at the same time then it gets very kind of you know beyond the mind so you know your mind can take you so far but then it starts to go into a much you know larger spectrum i guess you could say yeah and, and so um sorry yeah. go on no, I was just going to say that, you know, do you think there are some things you just can't explain? It just yeah, is 100%. that way? Yeah, well, I mean, you can explain them, but, you know, so there's a book by a yogi called uh, Paramahansa Yogananda, uh, or rather he's the author, Paramahansa Yogananda, and the book is called Autobiography of a Yogi. And in that book, I read that book, just as I was kind of really starting out on the healing kind of uh, work. And um, he writes about some very out there things. He writes about by location. So, you know, gurus that could be in one location and another location at the same time, wow. uh, you know, and knowing things without knowing them and, and all kinds of things. Right. Mm -hmm. And really he's talking in a way that, well, this is possible for everybody. And he talked a lot about his reality in a very humble way. He's not kind of showing this stuff up. He's just saying it exists. Yeah. And so, you know, there are explanations for that. But to be able to get to that stage, you know, it, it's definitely a little bit beyond explanation. And that's why I like Pranic, the school that I'm a part of, is because you know, explanations and speculation and everything about, you know, talking and, and thinking about things, it, it, that's, you know, one side of something. And often it's quite dry. You know, yeah. if you and I sit here and talk about bilocation, it will be, you know, mildly interesting, right? Yeah. But if you have the experience of bilocation, yeah. then that's something that's completely different. Yeah. And that's why I like this school because... You know, in this school, it's like, okay, here's something, here's a concept, here's an idea. Now let's go outside and practice it. Here's yeah. the aura, you know, like, so we've all heard about the aura, right? You know, yeah. sometimes you go to the Mind Body Spirit Festival and you get a picture of it and you're like, okay, maybe it's real, maybe this, you know, maybe everyone's picture looks the same. I don't know, you know. Yeah. But um, <laughs> yeah, right. So then, yeah. you know, you go out and then you're looking at someone's aura and someone else can see it at the same time. 
and they're both talking in the same way and saying, wow, but what's this that I can see here? You know, there's no doubt then that, that yeah. that's an experience. And so even if you don't have it in that moment, it's not away from your experience. You can have it later. And that's the thing with, you know, like, so for me, I'm really interested in talking to people about this work and I'm really enthusiastic about this work, but I'm always trying to encourage people to have a shot, you know, to have a go because the joy and uh, the, you know, people send me emails after they've done the course and they say, Oh, I can't tell you how excited I am. You know, I treated my friend in work and, and, you know, they got rid of their shoulder pain or I did a treatment on my kid, you know, and she got over this thing, you know, and it's just like, I feel excited for them, but yeah. you can see like, you know, you can just feel the energy pouring out yeah. of what they're riding. I mean, and what so, you're doing is you're allowing people to live their best quality life because I think sometimes people think, oh, I need to deal with this. It's just a thing I have. Yeah. You know, where you're going, no, hey, there's an opportunity for you to heal. And then that opportunity is going to widen the door for you to be who you really are, explore things you yeah. wouldn't have done before. Yeah. You know, you couldn't be any more right about that. And even to the point, even a very simple thing, like just being able to, like what I was saying about going to work, you know, if you don't feel like going to work and you know how to manipulate your energy system, so all of a sudden you've got more energy than, you know, two or three hours ago when you were just, you know, hanging around with your kids or whatever, it's like the, the difference that that can make on a day-to-day -day basis, you can't, there's no kind of number you can put on that. There's no, no. It, it just gives you a different life. It gives you a different experience of life. I need help with that. I'm a really passionate, enthusiastic person. And when I'm talking about stuff um, that I'm interested in, I could go on forever. But I yeah. notice that I'm tired a lot. You know, I'm, I'm active. Um, so I'm thinking that maybe I should be learning some experience, some tips and tricks from you um, to yeah. help me with that. But anyway, enough about me. I do want to know more about Pranic energy healing, I actually have not really heard too much about that, believe it or yes. not. So A, I'm wondering, <laughs> why isn't it more common, especially when you're talking yeah. about some of the incredible things that you're sharing with me today? And mm -hmm. how does it work exactly? Yeah. So <clears throat> that's, no, that's the normal. I'd never heard of it. it yeah. It's a relatively new school. Now, like Reiki, I, I, I'm not super you know uh, gender up on reiki but i know that i think it was around in like the 60s or something right yeah so i, I did my level of... one reiki but i'm so i'm a bit familiar with it but i'm not familiar with yeah. its origin or anything yeah so that that's that's a you know a school that's been around a long time i think pranic well the school i'm a part of has been around for about five years and the spiritual teacher of our school, he had another school, I think that's been around approximately 20 years. Okay. So I, I'm under the impression, I don't know how accurate this is, that there's around a million healers in the world at the moment practicing, you know, the, the kind of practices that we practice. And so I guess it's like that kind of critical mass, you know, you're interviewing me now and people are going to hear about this. There are people that are, a lot of celebrities at the moment are getting energy work and certain celebrities are getting pranic energy work. So, you know, it, it's going to kind of, I guess, in maybe a year or two, start really spilling out and people yeah. will know about it then. So it's good for your podcast, right? Because you're a pioneer here. You know, you can yes. say, oh, well, you know, I, I knew all about pranic. <laughs> yes, exactly. Thank you, Paul. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Um, but the, 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 I guess the other thing is as well is that because of the kind of, well, let, let's say people like George that I was telling you about, um, the work that he was doing, it was very, very highly specialized work. And so he would get a, a basically only word of mouth clientele. He never advertised really. 
And I think that that was how it was for a lot of these really excellent healers. Whereas for people like myself, I'm out there, you know, putting myself out there, you know, letting people know about it. So I guess as more people like me come on board, then there's going to be a little bit more exposure to the work. But pranic as, as a, as a functioning tool works on, you see, I'm always, the reason I'm pausing here is because I don't want to sound too airy fairy. I don't want to use yeah. words that are going to be beyond, you know, people's experience, but it uses the energy body, the aura and the chakras that are within the energy body to enhance the person's physical, emotional, and mental health. So even without checking your chakra system, some of the things that you've told me, I know that there are certain areas that are a little low in energy for different reasons, but because those energy centers, you see, the chakra works as a vortex of energy. And again, I don't want to make that sound kind of rubbishy, but basically prana is all around us, right? Prana is life force energy, and that's the fuel for the body. So you know that in your personal experience, because when you get up in the morning and you're vibrant and you're like, yeah, okay, let's go. You know, I'm like feeling great and I'm full of energy, we say, right, in the West. Then, you, you know, off you go and the person cuts you up on the road and it's like, no big deal. And your boss says something to you and you're like, yeah, whatever. And vice versa. If you get up in the morning and your energy is kind of low, then you get up and the person cuts you up on the road and it's a big deal. You know, it stays with you for ages and your boss says something to you and you can't get over it all day or maybe all week. Right. And that's the difference between a low energy and a high energy. And of course, if that low energy stays with you for some period of time, so for example, you're talking about like a low energy that's a little bit predominant in your life, so you're sleeping a lot, maybe like your kind of dynamic energy is not very high. Yeah. And aches and pains start appearing a little more in the body. You start to notice, you know, I see a nodding away there, so I'm kind right. of getting a feedback <laughs> like, yeah. Because it's not separate. Your 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 experience yeah. is not separate from anybody else's. Yeah. And when you know and understand the energy system, it, it's just like I could tell you a lot of stuff about your emotional state. But, you know, I mean, for the sake of your privacy, I'm not going to in the interview. Yeah, thank but, you. You know, it, it's, the same, it's the same when anybody comes in to the clinic and I start yeah. saying, oh, okay, you know, I, I check the chakra system and I say, okay, well, this is like this and this is like this. So that means this is probably happening in your experience at the moment. And they're like, they think I'm reading their mind. You know, they think right. I'm a psychic or something, you know. Yeah. And I, I, but it's just like, if you went to see a physio and you told them that you had a problem with a certain tendon, they would say, oh, it must be very difficult, you know, when you're moving your leg like this. So once you understand the energy system, even if it's just in a basic way, and you know that for you, okay, it's the chakra at the base of the spine is low. It's a bit low in energy at the moment. So if you knew how to strengthen that and to bring more energy in, then straight away you would need to sleep less the physical body would have more power and also there'd be certain other um, benefits that you would get. And so right. that's pranic in a nutshell. It's okay. like you find the low energy or the energy blockage and then you change the energy system. So you take it out, the mm -hmm. blockage, or you put energy in and that, that's it. The person starts to recover. And depending on certain factors, a person gets better quickly or it takes a little time. So could you say it's almost changing the battery in a way? It's almost exactly like that yeah. because your body is to a certain degree a battery. Yeah. I was watching a guy, um, Mantak Chia, he was talking about the um, small and large intestine and saying that it was found recently by some scientists that it's actually – the, the way that a battery works and the way the small and large intestine, the shape of them, it's identical. Wow. And so, I know, right? But even in modern biology, they're talking now a lot about cellular health, ATP production. ATP is a, a, an energy source that every cell has. Well, I can almost guarantee, you know, we have about 80% success rate. If people come in with 
depression, anxiety, those kind of things. Yeah. That after probably three treatments, that person's life is completely different. I mean, like I'm talking like unrecognizably different. Because when you start to energize that battery, you start to fill the battery back up, that the experience of life is completely different. Not only, you know, are they more able to go out and do the things they want to do and they're feeling better emotionally, but all those worries and concerns that they've had that have been kind of weighing them down, they've eliminated them because just like if your digestive system is not working well, you can't eliminate the food out of your system properly. Well, it's the same emotionally and mentally. You know, if right. you had taken on emotions from your environment or you're having emotions yourself that you can't get rid of, then if your battery's not working, you know, the, the machinery's not got the energy, how can you expect to unload that stuff or to, to let it go then? But we don't know that. You know, people yeah. don't know that. You yeah. know, and yeah. I didn't know that. <laughs> you know, that, yeah. that's why I started meditating because I was depressed. Yeah. I had no idea yeah. that my energy was low. You know, I didn't know this stuff. So I know yeah. that right now there's a lot of people in the world um, dealing with anxiety and depression. And, sure. you know, it's pretty powerful, the stuff that you're saying, where, you know, the kind of work that you're doing can essentially help them to get a reset. Yeah. And, yeah, and that, that's strong. So hopefully... You know, you can continue to promote, and I know you are, uh, the work that you're doing and the fact that, that these things can help. So out of curiosity, where do you see, you know, pranic energy healing kind of working with modern medicine? Well, look, you know, one of the things that is said in every course that you go to with this school is there's no conflict between what we do and allopathic medicine. Mm -hmm. In fact, what we do supports allopathic medicine. So I have a lot of people that come in because they're on medication and they've heard that there's a possibility that they can come off it. And some people do do that. Some people don't, but some yeah. people do. And that's not up to an energy worker to say, you know, you shouldn't take this. Or, you know, yeah, that's no, up to a doctor. You know, that, that, that's their job, you know? Yeah. Um, but for some people, if the reason for their imbalance is energetic, then you can help that person alongside what the doctor's doing. Mm -hmm. Because the, the doctors are doing everything that they can do, right? Yeah. Um, but just like I couldn't help somebody, uh, you know, if they needed some advice with their medication because that's not my training. Yeah. It's not the doctor's training. And I get that. And so I think that there's a lot of people that aren't open to what we do in the energy world um, for different reasons. And there's a lot of people that aren't open to allopathic medicine. And I think personally, from my point of view, that both views are wrong because there's benefit in both. Yeah. And if my daughter's not well, I take her to the hospital. Yeah. You know, uh, of course, like I'm going to do what I can do at home, but if it, you know, shows that, you know, we need to take her and, you know, get some medical help, then I'm straight there. Yeah, of course. Um, and I say the same all the time, you know, like I was telling you about George, well, he was a doctor, medical doctor. Uh, he didn't practice allopathic medicine anymore. He decided to become an energy healer. But, you know, he, people um, would come in and talk to him and he'd say, oh, well, you need to go and get an x-ray and bring it, bring it in and show me. Or you need to, you know, go and get a blood test and bring it in and show me what the blood test, you know, because he'd want to know. He'd, he'd need to know so he could treat it very specifically. Right, right. Well, that's yeah. great. I hope that, you know, a future continues to open up and grow where the two really can work hand in hand and the referrals go back and forth. And, you yeah. know, um, I mean, it's only 2020, so there's definitely a lot of time for these transitions sure. to happen. Well, so you have a lot of, I was just going to say, we've got a lot of nurses. I've got some paramedics that come to the courses. Uh, I'm treating some few people at work in the hospital at the moment, in the administration side of things, you know, 
that these are people that need help as much as anybody else, right? They've got high stress jobs, you know? Yeah. Um, and just like yoga isn't, uh, you know, in conflict with Western medicine, nor is energy healing. Yeah. Yeah. Well said. So you have talked a little bit about some of the success stories that George has had. Uh, and yeah. I know with your back, we've mentioned that. So what about for you? What are some success stories or what are some, you know, stories that maybe people can hear themselves or see themselves in that you would be willing to share today? Yeah. Well, I mean, look, just recently, I think last week, this, yeah, maybe last week I was talking to a guy. He, so these guys got in touch because his wife had uh, facial tics, uh, pretty severe, you know, uh, there was a lot of movement in the face and the neck and even in the arms. And they've been trying uh, with medication and wasn't working. And so he kind of somehow stumbled across the work that I do uh, and came and we started treating his wife uh, and she was getting really good results. In fact, she, I think she got four treatments and you can barely see any movement anymore. It's just incredible, really. Um, and But even more incredible, he had tinnitus, um, which is, you know, this ringing and noises in the oh, ear. Yeah. And it was really difficult for him. He said to me after we did the treatment, he said it was he could understand how people could commit suicide because of it, because, it, you know, it was so intrusive. And we did one treatment for the tinnitus and he said that by the next day it had gone down to the point where it was like 30% and by the end of the week it was just 5%. So it completely, wow. he said he has to listen for it now. And we picked up a few other things when I was doing that treatment for him and so we'd done a few more treatments and because we're treating both of them together, you know, they were telling me that their relationship has improved and that their life in general has improved and that their ability to run their business has improved. And now we've got, they're coming up again next week and now they're bringing daughter and son-in-law and maybe also daughter-in-law. And that's normally how it works in the clinic, you know? Normally mum first. I don't know why, right? But yeah. you know, females are more open, right? Yeah. Um, and then husband comes, <laughs> you know, cause she's like, you got to get this fixed up. Yeah. You know? <laughs> yeah. so, and he's a normally not, not for this gentleman I was talking about, but normally they're a bit more like folding their arms, you know, what's all this about? Yeah. yeah. But then, you know, they get a result. So then the kids start coming, you know, and then the friends come. And so this is, you know, normal. The butterfly effect. Yeah, absolutely. Mm. Yeah. And, and I think, you know, like. They're nice stories. You know, I can tell you some stories. I've got a few testimonials up on Facebook. There's a girl that, you know, she was having um, bleeding, um, you know, like menstrual bleeding continually, wasn't stopping uh, for weeks. And we did a, a treatment, one treatment, and the bleeding stopped. And it wow. was due to cysts. Um, and then we did a few more treatments, and she's never had a problem with it since. You know, and there's a lot of stories like that. You know, there's a lot of people that come because they've got problems that aren't getting helped elsewhere. And, you know, they get the help they need because it's like the, the part of the jigsaw that needed putting in it. It's, they're not getting it elsewhere. So when you yeah. come to someone that can put that piece in, then, then they get great results, you know. And look, there's lots and lots of stories. But personally, I, I think for me, you know, it's the people that come in that, like anxiety and depression and, and, you know, these kind of things, they're like a plague in our modern society. You know, like, I mean, who hasn't had that experience in their life, right? Yeah. And if you haven't, then you definitely know someone that has, right? Yeah. yeah. And if not, that person is, is suffering under the banner of, I have anxiety, I have depression, you know? Yeah. And, um, like, it's for those, when those people come in, and, you know, in the third treatment, they're, they're telling me like, oh, my goodness, you know, my life is so much, you know, it, it's like they're talking about such trivial matters after that. You know, it's like the whole life has flipped around. They're the ones that really get my heart, you know, because yeah. I really know this person can go and live their life now. 
you know, they can go on and get on with things. And there's a legal issue with me saying that we can cure anxiety and depression. So I need to make it clear that we don't cure that. I, I uh, help people uh, with those um, ailments and I see people getting results. Yeah. Uh, other than that, you know, I, I, I'm not sure what happens um, uh, for them, you know, in relation to allopathic medicine. But that, that's the stuff that I really get excited about, you know. Because yeah. those people tend to come to the courses as well, actually. And, you know, I see them because the courses, you know, we're running every so often. It's not like you're coming in every week for a treatment. And, you know, they're telling me, oh, you know, la, 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 this thing. I got a new job. I got a boyfriend. I got a girlfriend. I did this. You know, it's just really, that, that's for me, that, that really makes a difference. Yeah, that's wonderful. I can imagine that that would keep you going to work with a smile on your face for sure mm-hmm. every day. So, you know, you talked earlier about how, you have the power to change your energy. And I believe that as well. And it sounds like you help people to do that as well. Now, do you have to be willing to want to change? Do some people come and they've got these ailments and they've almost learned to, I don't know, use them as excuses for not doing things? Or do you find that, you know, if you're able to help them change their energy, that it really also changes even the crutch that they might've had on that ailment? And yeah. do you have to be willing to change? Is that part of the success that people are having? George said to me, I asked him a similar question once, and George said to me, if they're in the clinic, they're willing enough. Um, and, and, you know, basically what you're talking about there, it's a misunderstanding, or at least my understanding is, that when people have that ailment or that illness uh, and so we, uh, based on our understanding of people and, and what we're presented with in our society, we think, oh, that, that, that's a crutch, you know, they, they, they're, they're using that because of X, Y, and Z. But normally it's based in the fact they've had a trauma. And so the trauma uh, imprints on the energy system. And so if a person comes for an emotional ailment that we're treating, then the first thing we do is treat trauma, obsession, compulsion, fear, and phobia. Because I'm, I'm not talking about uh, some people do come where they, you know, have to switch the light switch on 10 times before they leave the house or all that kind of stuff. But right. it, it's more that, you know, we have had an incident in our life that then we react to a certain input then in a certain way. Well, that's trauma, obsession, compulsion based on the training that we're given. So that happens to all of us. All of us have that. But some of us can get on with our lives and and live a full and healthy life with that in our system. And some of us can't. And so the people that can, then they may get ill. Because, you know, if you think about your situation at the moment, right, you've got a little bit of low energy and means that you can't, you know, you're not getting uh, enough uh, rejuvenation out of your sleep. And so it makes life a little hard, right? You know, sometimes you've got to get up to work and you've got to kind of drag yourself there. Well, times that by five. And then you're living in a world where you need a reason not to go to work. Because no one's going to say to you, if you break your leg, come on, Lauren, let's get in work. Come on, stop being soft. Come on, pick pick yourself up. Get in work, love, you know. You're going to be like, ah, I broke my leg. But if you've got low energy, that's meaning that you can't get your energy back. You know, it's and every day your energy goes down a little bit, down a little bit, down a little bit then what do we do? Well, we need to find something. So, you know, the sickness is already there. So then we just have, you know, something else that goes with it. Right. And so for some of us, we live in that situation for a long period of time and it becomes a part of our reality and, and then becomes a part of our character, let's say. Yeah. So for that person then, yes, it takes a little longer because it's hard and, you know. Their identity someone, now. Exactly. Yeah. If someone comes in and they've got a, some a shoulder injury that they got yesterday you sometimes you can fix that up in 20 minutes but if someone comes in that had a shoulder injury 20 years ago then that might take a series of treatments right it works the same emotionally right fair enough um now i do know that you do individual as well as group healings do you find that one is better over the other The group healing is about getting it out there to people that want to have an experience I've had the, the group healing, well, that was my intention. 
Yeah. <laughs> and people would come in and have these really huge shifts, you know, really massive, you know, breakthroughs and, and you know, unlock grief from years ago, you know, and all this stuff. And so normally you'd have to do a couple of individual treatments after that to really right. level things up for them. Um, but, I, you know, the way we work in the clinic at the moment is mainly around individual work. The group work is beneficial and I'm looking at doing some more group work in the future, especially around relationship. Mm -hmm. Because the great thing about group work is other people have our blind spots, but they're not blind spots to them. So they say, oh, I've got this going on. Da -da 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 -da. And someone goes, oh, yeah, wow, I really resonate with that, you know. But if I say, hey, Lauren, here's your blind spot, you go, oh, no, 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 <laughs> you know, because it's too confrontational, you know. Yeah. So um, that, that's one of the great advantages of the group work is that, you know, it, it helps people to see the picture. Right. Actually, what I found is like for the actual healing process, because of what we're doing with the pranic is very specific, then it tends to, if you have a very specific ailment that you're trying to get over, then it tends to work a little better in a one on one setting. That's right. my personal opinion. You can laser exactly. focus upon the treatment. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. You can spend an hour on that one person doing exactly what they need. Whereas if you've mm -hmm. got 20 people in the room and you've got an hour, it's a little bit broader, obviously, and a little less kind of laser focused. Yeah. Right. So when somebody comes to see you, what exactly is the process? I mean, do you heal with your hands? You did mention before you don't need to touch anybody. Do you heal in your mind? How does that look? And also, can you do remote healings if you don't need to touch with your hands? 100%. Yeah, absolutely. So remote healing, you know, not at the moment, but for one time well, in my practice uh, was at least 50% of my work. And we're working with people in, you know, different areas in Australia, but, you know, some people abroad in the Philippines and Turkey and England and America, whatever. And basically the process, I guess, is that you take the energy from the environment by absorbing it into your body battery. And then you move that energy out of your body battery into the other person's body battery. Because at the moment, they don't know how to do that. Or there's a little anomaly in their machinery that you've needed to remove to recharge. So we don't touch at all in the treatments. Pranic energy healing is a, a no-touch modality. Mm -hmm. um, but you definitely feel things, you know, you'll feel that like, for example, a nice treatment that George showed me is how to straighten the hips. Like a lot of people almost definitely, you know, I can see from the way you're sitting, you're almost definitely your hips are out slightly. Yeah. So yeah. Right. And yeah. so we basically energize the different energy sensors and then the hip will find the energy it needs and the pelvic girdle will straighten up. That's a really reliable treatment. If I do that treatment 20 times, it might not work once, you know? So I did that recently for a lady in Melbourne, and she also had a curve in the spine. So we straightened the spine. Now, I couldn't see her because she didn't have the Facebook or the, you know, anything. We just did it over the phone. You wanted to hear her, like, you know, when I said to her, okay, I want you to go in the mirror and, you know, put your hands on your hip and tell me. She was like, what? She was like yelling down the phone. You know? She was like, oh my God. She's like, I can't believe how straight I look. I can't believe the way I'm standing. You know, she was just like so excited by it. And, and that's a, she, that client, where, you know, we've worked together for some time now, but, you know, it, it's, uh, it still blows me away. And so, yeah. yeah, remote healing. Yeah, you know, like if, like, so energy and physical is not that separate in this context that we're talking about it at the yeah. moment where you heal the body or the emotions. It's not that separate. So just like if you have a situation where, you know, someone's really low in energy because they're dehydrated, then you give them a glass of water 
And then the cells in their body have the uh, ability to, you know, start functioning correctly again. Then that person has a miraculous and in inverted commas recovery, right? They're all yeah. like, wow, I feel so much better. Oh my <laughs> goodness. And I've got all this energy, right? Yeah. So it, it's actually no different at all from the energy system. When you put the prana in, because it's vital, you know, in yoga, we've got this term, right? Pranayama. Yeah. yeah. So we're familiar with that term. So prana means energy. Yama means control of. And so if you're breathing in a certain way and you can enhance your energy system, that, that's kind of like a, a, a very simple way of explaining pranayama, then you can see that the energy is carried on the breath. So if I said to you, okay, I want us to go on a, a water fast, Lauren. So we're just going to drink water. We could probably pull that off for about a week. Mm -hmm. I, I know people who have done it for longer, right? If I say to you, I, we want to go on a, a water and food fast. So no, we're not going to take anything and, you know, any kind of nourishment like that. We'd probably go a day or two. Mm -hmm. yeah? If I said to you, let's go on a breathing fast. <laughs> we're not going to get past minutes, you know? Yeah. And so the, it's, we already know the oxygen and carbon dioxide, you know, uh, recycling, it, it's the, one of the most important functions of the body. But yet we kind of ignore it when we look at healing. And so everyone comes out of their yoga classes, oh my goodness, I feel so much better. Oh, I feel so much more relaxed. Like I've got this focus, you know, I feel energized even though I did a workout. You know, we've got that, but why is that? What is that experience? Yeah. Well, yoga is an experience where you flush out the dirty energy because of the movements and because of the breath work and certain other practices that you may do, then you revitalize the energy system. And so that's why you've got that feeling. But unfortunately, for yoga practitioners, that unless you're practicing a lot, you know, twice a day or once a day every day or whatever you're doing, then sometimes it's not enough. It's not enough to get you over the finish line. It kind of gets you close and you feel like, yeah, I'm there. I'm kind of pushing close. But it may be that you need certain things to happen in the energy system. So it's a little bit like you have a car crash. And then you take your car into the mechanic and you say, I need a service on my car. And he's like scratching his chin goes, oh, bloody hell, love, you need more than a service on this. You know? It's yeah. like, that's <laughs> yoga, right? You know, we go yeah. for like our hour and yeah. it's good enough. It's like, it's a great maintenance. It's a fabulous maintenance. You know, it's one of the best that I know of. I'm always saying to people after they finish a few treatments, hey, go and do some yoga, you know, do some yoga, do some breath work. Some do, some don't, whatever. That's their choice. It's their body. But, you know, and I have the same, like, so you're a yogi. Then you want to come in for a treatment, you'll probably get a great result because you've done a lot of the leg work already. Your system is already kind of cleaner because of the movements and because of the breath work. Yeah. But it's just a few little things that you need just a little bit more help with, you know, and yeah. that will give you the, the big push over the finish line. So you did do a fair amount of training in breath work and in asanas. How are they different? Well, the asana works on uh, understanding that if you move the physical body, like, so you think about sun salutation, for example, you know, you kind of fold forward and then you open up and then, you know, you open one way, you're like, you know, you're doing dog down and then you're doing cobra, you know, you're kind of moving the body in and out, compress, expand, compress, expand, compress, expand. So in that way, it flushes out your physical organs, obviously, right? Because right. of the compression and the expansion. But that's sort of the same things happening to the chakra and the energy system. It's getting squeezed, it's getting opened, it's getting squeezed, it's getting opened. So it's also releasing dirty energy. Then the breath work, like I explained, is pulling in energy. You're absorbing energy from the environment, predominantly air prana. So it's not different from the treatment because we're doing the same thing, except we're cleaning the chakra, we're cleaning the aura using our hands. 
and we're cleaning the energy out and then we're transferring the energy in. But I'm doing breath work as I'm transferring the energy. I'm bringing the energy in on the breath and then transferring it into the person's energy field on the breath. And is and that person using... breathing? Like following no. your but breath? Yeah, they're breathing. Or they're breathing. <laughs> <laughs> Otherwise, I'm in trouble. <laughs> that treatment didn't work. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but they're not breathing in the same rhythm or pattern as you. They're just no. doing Often the person will go to sleep. Yeah, the person okay. normally goes to sleep. And even it's a common report that the person, their consciousness may even leave their body. And I'm talking about people that have no experience in that kind of thing. You know, they start to, had one lady, she told me, oh my goodness, she couldn't believe it. She got up, she said, she was watching me do the treatment and watching herself sleep. Wow. You know? And that's nothing, that's not something that I've, you know, that's her, like, because you're transferring energy so the person heals themselves. The body yeah. heals itself. That's a fact. You don't need a paracetamol. You don't need a this thing or that thing or whatever. But sometimes you need extra little bit of help. Yeah. So you need a, you know, you need the pharmaceutical drug. You mm -hmm. need the healer. You need the physio. You need the whatever it is, right? Mm -hmm. And but every time the body heals itself, and so that's all we're doing is we're transferring the energy into the person's body, into the person's emotional body, and it creates the healing it needs. Right. So when you were talking about breath earlier, and you know, and in line with what you're saying about how you know the body can heal itself, do you think that the breath? is a really big part about that healing process. And do you think that people, it's massive, yeah. So for me, um, I just sound like I need all the help I can get in this episode, but um, <laughs> in yoga, for me, the breath part is always very difficult. Yeah. So I don't know and if that, other people feel that too, but I have a friend yeah. who's a breath worker and she asked if I wanted to get a session and I said no. <laughs> yeah. Because, well, because just... there's trauma lodged in the chakras, right? There's trauma right. lodged, not just for you, for anybody, right? Yeah. And so when you start to breathe in a certain way, when you're doing the yoga exercise or whatever, you start to be like, oh, 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 you know, like you're getting a bit panicky, you know, you feel like your head's underwater or something a little bit because the trauma is trying to get out then. But it's right. doing it in a way, it's like a cathartic way when you're doing it like that. So, you know, you might end up like bursting out in tears or, you know, reliving an experience or whatever. So that's fine. That, that's a way of healing. There's nothing wrong with that. We don't go for that with the pranic work. Mm -hmm. We're pulling it out in a more kind of manual sense. So although the person may see things as they're lying on their bed or sitting on the chair or whatever, they might see and feel experience. It, it kind of, it's it leaving. Mm. whereas you know the cathartic work you know there, there may be a lot of pain that you kind of go back into experience and so a lot of people are in your situation a lot of people you know they, they've got a trauma or they're under a lot of stress and, and so the, the chakra that controls the breath is the solar plexus it, you know in between the rib cage yeah and that's the one that uh, is under the influence of stress and anxiety and, and a lot of traumas are held there not just there, it's other chakras as well. But so then when you're trying to breathe in a certain way, and this is obvious, you know, if, you know, we start to get stressed and we start to breathe differently, right? You know, or people say, oh, that person told me that thing and I felt sick, you know, right. because the, it's all around that same area, right? It's yeah. just around that rib cage area. Or you get butterflies when you get nervous or excited in that area, right? Yeah. So that's that chakra starting to dance. Oh, oh, geez. Oh, we're not safe here. Oh, what's going on? You know? So it's the same experience. Like if, if I said to you, okay, I need you to breathe like this while you're doing this asana, your solar plexus is like, nah, we're not doing that. Cause you know, we're going to have a meltdown in here and that's going to be embarrassing. And then I'm going to feel more anxious or stressed or whatever. So we go, Oh, I can't do that. No, let, let's just pretend we're breathing like everyone else. Right. Is, right? <laughs> uh, so, that, that's why then, you know, instead of the service, we need to take our car in to get a repair. Right. You know, because like yoga, pranic has the same philosophy that the body is the vehicle. The body's taking the bigger aspect of ourselves that is the soul into our experiences. 
and so if you know like we you know i've got a car and you know sometimes like there's problems with my car and i can't expect my car to take me down to melbourne if i don't get it repaired but no one tells us well your energy system might need some repair so you're still trying to take the car to melbourne without the repair right and or then, else you think you can do it yourself exactly and the biggest catch then is when you can then you're not good enough and that's a compounding factor because then we start to have negative thoughts about ourselves, and that affects the chakra in the energy system and then it's a negative spiral and that's when normally i get people to come in for treatments is their life is going downhill really fast or they're just at rock bottom and so it's my kind of personal philosophy is better to come in before that stage because mm. number one you don't need as many treatments but number two is you don't get caught in this philosophy that in some way you're inherently wrong you know in some way you're not good enough because you know you can read these books right you know oh you're the light you know lauren you're you're you know you're pure love lauren you're you know right and you but when you're not feeling it you're not feeling it right that's right. that you know so i can read that book back when i was suffering from depression i could read that book and i'd be like whatever you know i don't feel right. like i'm the light i don't feel like i'm the love yeah. you know? and that's what the chakra reset you know when you get the energy reset then literally the world that you see looks differently because if the solar plexus chakra is big and you're under stress everything seems stressful thing that your boss says the argument with the partner whatever but when the solar plexus chakra is the right size and the heart chakra is the right size then the balance of experiencing love and experiencing stress things that are attributed to like the ego the, the solar plexus is about me and mine and, mm -hmm. and what's important for me then it's in balance right so i'm just giving a really common example yeah because it's very difficult to extend love and joy and happiness and peace all those attributes of the heart chakra to people when the solar plexus chakra is so big it's dominating your experience and that's where we're living we're living in the solar plexus society lives in the solar plexus at the moment right. you go to work you have a stressful time you go home you watch an action movie you go to bed you get up you go <laughs> you know what i mean you have an argument with, and it's like this it's like everything's yeah. happening in the solar plexus you read the news <laughs> exactly right oh my goodness i know well some people i don't like my soul but just can't handle it yeah <laughs> yeah i get the report from my mom yeah yeah i i went through a lot of years a lot a lot a lot of years where i would not read the news and i don't watch movies that are going to be super upsetting because it's just too difficult but i've started reading the news in the last few years uh, and i think i've been able to kind of separate from that but there are certain stories that i'm just would never entertain or read it all day or anything. So yeah. can, you, can you tell me if I'm summarizing this properly? Because I wanna make sure that I'm clear. So basically, the type of energy work that you're doing is you're taking the prana energy, you're moving it through your body, and you're essentially channeling and cleansing the battery of the client that you're working with. And in the meantime, it's almost a non-confronting process for your client because the client essentially gets to lie down or sit comfortably, often if they're checking out while you're processing this, and then they get to basically reap all the benefits without having to do a lot of the work. Is that yes. pretty yeah, right? It sounds like sort of like a relaxing kind of process yeah. is it well, look, look that's the predominant experience I, I don't want people to get the wrong impression that you know there is still sometimes you know say for example people in a grieving process yeah they will come in or like so an even better example is um you know people have had a lot of childhood trauma they will come in and i will say to them look we're not going to get rid of the experience we're not gonna you know, make it magically go away, but 
we give you the ability to live your life bigger than that experience right because then when you as you described then when you take that stuff out and it's not confrontational then the person has a much bigger perspective because that's not the dominant experience then that they're having mm. it's an experience in amongst other experiences it may still be a dominant experience but it doesn't mean that their whole life has to be driven by that experience. Right. Their whole identity and doesn't need to be wrapped up in that. Exactly. Yeah. So, yes, for probably, let's say, 70% of people, they would have the experience that you're describing now. Mm -hmm. There will be probably 15% of people that have an experience that, you know, can be a little more... Um, you know they're more involved you know they may go away after the first treatment and just have a really good cry you mm. know they don't know what they're crying about it's not for a particular thing but they just have a big release you know they just have a yes. really good cry or whatever yeah. or they get very fatigued you know some people they go home and sleep for like 12 hours and they're still tired the next day but then you know and then there's another 15 percent out of the whole thing that they have a you know, a, a different experience again, you know, everyone's different, but generally speaking, yes, it's quite a relaxing experience. Mm. Even to the point, if you've been working with someone for some time, they may have a very specific thing. Like one girl I work with, she's a student actually. Um, she was trying to buy a house and we found that there was a trauma around that. So we cleared out the trauma. And at the end of the treatment, I said, okay, how do you feel about buying a house? And she was like, Oh, I still feel anxious. So I asked her some questions. We found where it was lodged still in the body. We pulled it out and I said, so, okay, how do you feel about buying a house now? She said, affordable. That was a word that came out. Two right. weeks later, she bought a house. Right. You know, it's right. like, yeah. you know, when that stuff's in your system, you can't yeah. just pretend it's not there. Yeah. It's, it's still in your system, giving you an experience. Yeah. Oh, I, I love it. Well, you know, we've been talking for an hour. It feels like we've just got started. Um, so I don't know whether or not you want to come back on the show another time. We can talk a little bit more. Uh, it's been really interesting. I love that. Yeah. Okay. Wonderful. Because it's been great. I mean, we didn't even talk a lot about meditation or my favorite, one of my favorite subjects, yoga, which I'm sure for people who haven't done yoga as much, it might bore them to tears to, you know, have a whole episode about talking about that. But I find it so important. Um, before we sign off, knowing that we have a few things to cover off in part two, so we we'll definitely leave some stuff up for discussion. If our listeners could take away maybe one message from today, what would you want that to be for them? My message would be to the people that are having a tough time at the moment is it doesn't have to be as tough as you think. Mm -hmm. I love that. I mean, That's so good. Yeah. yeah. And it's okay to ask for help. And people like Paul are there to assist you with that. I and get on, treatments all the time. <laughs> do you? From other people? Yeah. Oh, 100%. Oh, yeah. I have to. Like my line of work, I've got to keep yeah. clean. And Actually, yeah. that's something I did want to ask you about your cleansing process. There's a lot. There's, there's many, but one that I would highly encourage people to do themselves is to uh, swim in the ocean, or if you can't do that, to have a bath with salt water in. Mm. I, I, it's difficult for me to explain it super quickly, but basically it helps to clean the aura and to a certain degree the chakras. And so it, it, it's, a, it's a, a very quick and easy method of maintaining a better level of energetic health. Yeah, that's a huge thing. Well, Paul, it's been awesome talking to you today. I've really enjoyed it. I've definitely learned a lot. Um, and uh, I'd like to thank you as well because you have offered all of our listeners who mentioned that they've heard you from the Afterlight a 15-minute phone consultation uh, through your business, goldencrownhealing.com. Yep. Is that the best way to get a hold of you? Just go to your website? Yeah, 
Yeah, I mean, people can take a look on the website and see, you know, if they like the feel of who we are and what we do there. Otherwise, they can just call me directly, you know, or send me a message directly. Well, thank you again. Thanks a lot. Mm -hmm.